the word reciprocal means flipped fraction. Okay? So when we're solving these equations, you need to know what reciprocal means. It means when you flip a fraction. So for example, the reciprocal of 3 fourths would be what? 4 thirds. 4 thirds, yes. 3 fourths becomes 4 thirds and stuff like that. And when you multiply a number by its reciprocal, you get 1. Right? 3 fourths times 4 thirds, the 4s and the 3s cancel and you get 1. That's the goal. The goal in all of algebra is to get the variable by itself. If it has a reciprocal power, the only way to eliminate the power is to take the reciprocal power. Okay? So we do this actually. We just did this just now. The reciprocal of 2 is 1 half. And so when you have x squared equals 9 and you take the square root, you're actually raising it to the 1 half power. It's the same thing written in a different way. All right, here is the first example. We have 5x squared minus 31 equals 3x to the fifth plus 33. Right off the bat, I'm already alluding to what you're going to do. You need to group like terms, basically. So basically, every term that has to the fifth power is going to go on the left. And every constant number will go to the right. So the powers go to the left and the constants. Good, yeah. And it doesn't matter. You can actually put the powers on the right and the constants on the left. But what you're really doing is you're isolating those different terms. Um, is that step one? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Um, what you'll notice. So the last lesson, you had, you had several vari variables, right, like x squared plus x plus 2. In this lesson, you should only have, um, how can I say this? The power should be the same for the variable. Like, you're not going to have an x to the fifth and then an x to the fourth. It, it'll always be the same power that you're dealing with. So um, as you can see, we're moving the 31 to the left and the 3x to the fifth on the Sorry, we're moving the minus 31 to the right and the 3x to the 5th to the left. I call that separating unlike terms. Because a term that has a power is different than a term that doesn't. You can call it whatever you want. Isolate like, isolate like terms or whatever. I just had a hard time coming up with the wording there. But basically, you're moving um, the number to the right and the uh, power to the left. And you are combining them. So 5x to the 5th minus 3x to the 5th gives you 2x to the fifth, and when you add 31 to both sides, you get 33 plus 31 equals 64. So I feel like I probably showed too many steps there. It's pretty simple to see, though. You're adding 31 to get 64 here, and you're subtracting 3x to the fifth to get 2x to the fifth on the left. So by the time you're done with step one, you should only have one term on the left that has a power. Usually the power is going to be a fraction, actually. For this one, it's a, it's a whole number, but whole numbers also have reciprocals. And on the right, you should just have a constant number. What's the next thing you would do to get x by itself? Good. So you're going to, the next step is going to be divide by the coefficient. Or sometimes if you have a denominator, I don't think this is going to happen. But if 2 is in the denominator, like if it was x to the fifth divided by 2, then naturally you would multiply both sides by 2. You're doing the opposite of whatever is happening. So in this equation, it's being multiplied by 2. So you divide by it. So divide both sides by 2. 64 over 2 is 32. We have x to the fifth equals 32. So now let me ask you, what is the reciprocal of 5? Yeah, 1 fifth. So it's the same thing as taking the fifth root, OK? Raising both sides to the one-fifth power is the same as taking the fifth root, but we're, we're trying to, when it's a fraction, you obviously have to raise both sides to that reciprocal power. So that leads us to step three, take the reciprocal power of both sides. The reciprocal of five is one-fifth. And just like algebra, the, way it, the reason it works is because we're doing the, the same thing to both sides. As long as you do the same thing to both sides of an equation, it doesn't um, change the balance of the equation. And the reason we're doing that, I'm showing this down here, you don't have to write this, 5 times 1 fifth is 1. It's going to basically just leave x here on the left. That will always happen when we take the reciprocal power. 
the power here will go away and you're just left with the variable because a number of times it was its reciprocal equals one and anything to the first power is itself now on the right here we're kind of reaching way back into I think it might have been October when we uh, were evaluating numbers with fractional powers and the way to do that is to convert it to a radical. So does anybody remember what the, how to convert 32 to the 1 fifth to a radical? Say, so yeah, this, the bottom of this becomes the, what's inside the radical. So fifth root, right? Yep. Yeah, this becomes the, the power. Okay, so it's going to be the fifth root of 32 to the first power. Um, so there you go. I'll put the one there. Just for people that wonder where it went. But I'll reiterate that. The bottom of this fraction becomes this number right here. It's called the radican. It's a fancy word. It's the number that's wedged in that little radical symbol. The numerator becomes the power. And since it's 1, it doesn't matter. And so then we get to the point of what is the fifth root of 32. In other words, what number times itself 5 times gives you 32? And as you can see, it's 2. So that's the answer. That's the equation solved out, x equals 2. I want to show this next step, but I... Don't, don't write any of this down because it's, it's, it's like what you do when you finish a quiz or test or something and you don't have, you, you know, you have time to do this. But I'm just showing that if you plug this number back into the original equation and work it out, you get the same number on both sides. You get 129 equals 129, and that confirms. I've kind of gotten away from plugging stuff back in. Sometimes what happens is kind of ironic, like... You end up plugging it back in, and you, you actually end up doing the math wrong, and then you second-guess yourself. Like, I've done that myself. To me, it's almost better just to go back through and make sure that all of your steps are sound, meaning you did the same thing on the left as you did on the right. Um, but checking is always an option, and it just confirms that when you do get the same number on both sides, then you can be sure that you plugged in the right number. And if it's a multiple choice, 9 times out of 10, if you get one of the answer choices, it's probably going to be right, not necessarily. Okay, so this one has a fractional power. It's x to the 3 fifths over 4 plus 16 equals 0. Yep, good job. You want to subtract 16 from both sides, not multiply by 4. Remember when you're solving an equation you always add and subtract first. It's kind of the reverse of PIMDAS. So you will add, uh, sorry, subtract 16 from both sides. 0 minus 16 gives you uh, negative 16. What's the next thing you're going to do? Four. Yep, you'll multiply both sides by 4. And that will uh, cross cancel these fours right here, move it to the right. So you get negative 64 on the right, and you get x to the 3 fifths on the left. So here's where we have a fraction, and we definitely need to take the reciprocal of that. So what's the reciprocal of 3 fifths? 5 thirds. So we will be taking both sides of the equation, we'll be raising it to the 5 thirds power because 5 thirds is the reciprocal of 3 fifths. And it looks like this. And again, if uh, it's always going to just leave an x on the left. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. So this times this is 1. And so it'll just be x on the left. Now we have to evaluate that. And just like we said before, so that will become the radican, the number inside the radical. And 5 will be your power. It's going to look like this. The cube root of negative 64 to the fifth. Now you might say you can't have a negative inside of a radical, but you can if it's an odd root, right? Uh, so what this question is asking is what number times itself three times gives you negative 64. As you can see, it's negative 4. 
And yes, you do always want to do the root first before you apply the power, okay? It just makes it easier. You can do it that way, but think about negative 64 to the fifth is a huge number. That's why it's easier to work with the radical first. So that becomes negative 4, and then you raise it to the fifth power, and you get negative 1024. Negative 4 times negative 4, five times. And that will be your answer. x equals negative 10 over, sorry, negative 1024. It's the same as uh, negative 2 to the 10th power. Again, you can take that and plug it back in to the equation. You can kind of see how complicated that gets, though. But if you do it correctly and plug everything in right, you get 0 equals 0. So that confirms it's a solution. This down, I'm just going to get through it real quick. If you want to, I can go back, but the bell's going to ring in three minutes, so I'll just talk about this one. This one's not going to show up on the worksheet anyways. But what you're going to do for this one, these are both to the power of three. You're going to get all the numbers on the right, so I'm going to add seven to both sides. Okay, so I'll get 243 plus seven, which is 250. And then I'm going to subtract this from both sides on the left. They're both x minus 2 cubed, so you're actually just subtracting the coefficients. So 1 minus 3 is negative 2 on the left. Okay? So the x minus 2 is basically just x. You can think of it that way. The next thing you'll do then is divide by negative 2. So you'll get negative 125 on the right. So what do you think you would do now? x minus 2 cubed to negative 125. What's the reciprocal of 3? Yeah, one third. So raise both powers to the one, both sides to the one third power. That's going to cancel the three times one third on the left. So on the right, anything to the one third is the cube root. Cube root of negative one twenty five is negative five. You'll add two to both sides, and you get negative three. Oh, that's not a dumb question. If you have a negative fraction, um, you make the power positive and put it under one. So x to the negative 2 thirds becomes 1 over x to the 2 thirds. Okay. And I will print this worksheet out for you guys on, uh, tomorrow.